Welcome to Common Home Conversations Beyond UN75, a series by the Planetary Podcast. In Common Home Conversations, you will hear from leading global experts on how the proposal of recognizing the existence of an intangible global common without borders can change our relationship with our planet. The Common Home of Humanity has proposed an ambitious new global pact for the environment. The adverse effects of climate change span across borders and beyond territories. Recognizing the Earth system as a common heritage of humankind is the first step in restoring a stable climate, a visible manifestation of a well-functioning Earth system. This proposal's cascading effects would be systemic and tremendously impact international relations and economics, opening the doors to restoring a well-functioning Earth system. Common Home Conversations is the place to discuss a new social contract between society, economy, and the Earth system. Now, here is your host, founder and CEO of the Planetary Press, Kimberly White. Hello, and welcome to Common Home Conversations. Today, we are joined by Dr. Isabella Tashira, co-chair of the United Nations Environment Program's International Resource Panel and former Minister for the Environment of Brazil. Thank you for joining us today, Isabella. Thank you for inviting me to join you. My pleasure. So you have dedicated your life to protecting nature. What was the driving force for this passion? It's a hard question because uh, I have been working the last 35 years considering environmental issues, not only in Brazil, but also at the global level. I'm a biologist, okay, and I learned that how fascinating the life is, the diversity of life is. I was born in the last, last century, okay, in the 60s, and uh, it was a moment in the world that uh, in the 70s and 80s and out 90s that we are preparing how you live in this century, the new century. So uh, environmental issues uh, were emerging in strategic global issues, and I was really fascinated to have the opportunity to join, not only to uh, move forward, consider the developing issues in my country and how we can bring development together with environmental preservation and conservation, but more also how we can have an inclusive approach, consider the diversity of uh, societies and also in my country also and also the inequality, the social inequality. I used to bring things together since uh, my early years. So I think that environmental agenda and sustainability agenda that was during my career that these issues emerge and also we are able to join consider the global multilateral agreements and also the global summits, et cetera, et cetera, but always trying to manage better the national realities in Brazil and how we can bring people together. So it's, for me, it's, uh, it's the science beyond the, the politics means that uh, we can be together. And this fascinates me. I, I love the diversity of the planet, <laughs> not only the biological ones, okay? And this, the possibilities to discover, uh, to rediscover the world and uh, to be closer to other people, uh, this is something that uh, still today makes sense for me to move forward. So it's uh, how how to be part of the world in a way that uh, uh, you can contribute to best to a better quality of life and a new and a, to improve the relationship between humankind and the nature. As a biologist, makes sense for me. You know? Absolutely, and you're from one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. So I imagine that definitely had an influence on your career decisions to protect nature. Yes, fantastic, because uh, I started working uh, in 1984 after my uh, graduation. Also, I was fully dedicated to uh, scientific research, and I was provoked to join an environmentalist in Brazil that was in charge to create the new institutional arrangement, institutional governance in Brazil to manage environmental issues, not the natural resource issues or new biology as in traditional way in that they used to be approached. And it was a big challenge. And uh, this man uh, changed my life. Uh, his name is Paulo Nogueira Neto, a famous conservationist around the world. And also, I was absolutely introduced to this political world, uh, the environmental politics, indeed how the multilateral system will bring us together the big challenge that we were facing and is still facing today considering climate change, the global issue like biodiverse conservation, and also 
how a country like Brazil is a high biodiversity uh, assets, not only in Amazonia, but in Amazon forest, but also in tropical forests like at Atlantic forest, and also the diversity of biomes, how we can bring this together, how indeed we can use this in a better way to promote the development that we need. Well, you've certainly had a very impressive career, and I know that you have achieved an incredible 84% reduction in deforestation of the Amazon, the lowest historical deforestation rate. It has been called the largest ever global contribution for emissions reduction. Can you tell me more about this? Yes. When I when I checked the numbers today and I, I look back to the past, I just remember my professional career and indeed when we in Brazil uh, were fully engaged to tackle uh, deforestation in Amazonia, okay? And we established the first national program to go against deforestation and do learn a lot with this process. And I was part of the enforcement, environmental enforcement team in the Brazilian uh, institution that we call IBAMA, Environmental Institution. And uh, w I was part of this staff that uh, went into the Amazonia to tackle the first station. And it was very nice because it was not only the environmental uh, constituency, but also the science came, came together with us. And so uh, you bring together deforestation and also fires. Uh, the need to develop the scientific knowledge, the need to have an alliance. And, and we, I was in charge to negotiate the first memorandum of understanding between Brazil and the United States, exactly to learn more how we can manage and tackle forest fires and indeed how we can move on consider this agenda. And along my career, I have the opportunity to manage important international programs like the National Environmental Program together, the first one with World Bank and also the famous PPG-7. So uh, when I, I was minister, you have this experience in Brazil. You know that in Brazil, we have been improving our knowledge in the last 20 years, exactly how to manage better the uh, enforcement, the, the environmental enforcement in, in Brazil, not only in Amazonia. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, deforestation in Amazonia is around 95% based on illeg illegality. This is an environmental crime. We have a, a powerful uh, legal framework in, in Brazil to tackle uh, these problems. And we indeed we have a full capacity, scientific one, but also institutional ones, to bring the institution, public institutions together and to go against deforestation. They go against environmental crime. And Brazil in 2009, 2010 indeed, we launched our first national climate change policy that uh, support us to address better the, our outcomes. So what I'd like to highlight here is that we have, I have a huge opportunity to connect innovative public policy like a biodiverse conservation, the most important protect areas program in the world, around 6 million of hectares under biodiverse conservation and protection in Amazon region together. This is part of our legacy, and also we promote the second and third phase, and we address better with civil society new innovative governance models in such a way that you can bring things together. So it's not only go against uh, the illegalities. We use these outcomes to promote innovative policy on climate change and biodiverse conservation, and also to address solutions considered global sustainability when Brazil hosts Rio Plus 20 Conference 2012, and also when Brazil uh, develop innovative public policy like uh, genetic resource success and Nagoya protocol, etc., etc., make sense to bring things together. Uh, we cannot have a fragmented approach to address global issues. We need to understand how to connect in and how to bring new narratives or develop new narratives, economic and social, and that makes sense for environmental conservation. So I'm very honored to host, not only to work hard that I did, but also to host uh, the legacy from other partners that uh, were fully engaged to address in our recent, the last 35 years of uh, environmental history in Brazil, how indeed we learn at society, we learn as a uh, uh, public institution, we learn as an environmental government, also international cooperation, how indeed we can join, how we can be together to tackle the illegalities, the environmental crime, as I mentioned before, but also uh, to manage a successful agenda to bring things together and to make sense for developing and emerging economies like Brazil. Now, we often talk about the importance of stopping deforestation and conserving the Amazon, but we seldom talk about the Amazonians that live in the region, which is around 25 million people. I did not know that. A recent study has shown that indigenous people are critical to conserving biodiversity. 
However, they are often left out of the key multilateral discussions on environmental governance. How do we solve this social environmental issue and include indigenous leaders at the table to discuss how best to conserve these highly biodiverse areas? And this is an excellent question. Brazil has a diverse population, okay, and indigenous people are part of this. And also indigenous people have rights, okay, and these rights are well recognized in our uh, constitution, okay? So this is a known issue in my opinion, okay? Uh, why it's a known issue? We need to, uh, to go uh, and to, to practice what the federal constitution established. Okay, we need to recognize their rights. So when you have people that go against this, this is, doesn't make sense. We go against the law. It's the same around the world. When you go into the other countries and you check indigenous people, you don't need, you cannot deny their rights. Okay. What you need to understand is how to bring these guys into the political rooms, into the, to sit at the tables in the round table to discuss their rights and their perspectives. But they are not the only ones who have the other perspectives that you need to bring together and to conciliate. It's a, really, it's a transformative process to know or to learn how to listen to people, how indeed, uh, we can use the knowledge in their perspective together with us and we can together try to find new ways to promote development around the world with an inclusive approach. It's not only to address informalities and inequalities, it's to, it's to address better political rights, okay, to be together and to discuss based in our knowledge, in our ambition, okay, in our values. So this diversity is our power, is our power, is our asset, but we, unfortunately, we don't know sometimes, uh, how to manage this and how you can uh, listen to these people, uh, not only to, come on, this is a public hearing. No, how you can build new process based on this diversity of stakeholders and indeed in the diversity of knowledge, knowledge and also in diversity of political assets. And this is something that countries like Brazil, for example, we have some players in Brazil that they have difficult to understand this. So uh, my feeling is that we need to, in a pragmatic role, in a pragmatic way, in a political way, we need to separate better what are the known issues, okay, and what are, what what are indeed the new issues, what are the concrete issues that must be addressed in the concrete ways that uh, we can move forward. Absolutely. And speaking of solutions, one of the things that has been brought up in recent years is a new global pact for the environment. Do you think that the environment and sustainability issue can be the needed common ground for building a new economy, a more just society, and establishing a better legal framework for the environment? Yes. Uh, this is something uh, also, in my opinion, so fascinating because when uh, the humankind is supposed to uh, be confident that uh, we are able to manage Everything you have this disruptive process not only based on the COVID crisis and the health and environmental crisis. And this COVID crisis is a health and environmental crisis, okay? Uh, but also uh, consider the new political global order and what's happened today, and uh, and how we can share new values considering that we have one planet. I, d I don't know a planet B. So uh, we need to understand that when we are discussing. Sustainability, in my opinion, sustainability is the uh, the only issue today that brings all the all the countries together. They are not they are not trade. It's not the economy of innovation. It's not uh, peace. For example, we have the different problems around the world. It's not migration. Do you agree? Uh, so uh, sustainability is the issue that brings the the nations together, the societies together. And indeed, after uh, the COVID crisis uh, uh, or during the COVID crisis, we are learning how we need to improve our relation between humankind and nature. So what I'm saying is that if you understand business or if you indeed understand uh, the strategic role that science used to play, but will play strategically in the future, okay, how we can bring the scientific knowledge together with our political understanding, our economic uh, Knowledge and then how indeed we can manage this. It means that uh, probably humankind is learning today that we need to know more about the connections and how things are connected around the world, how nature connects things, indeed, and how our societies 
will be connected not only based on uh, physical assets, but also considering the challenges of the economy of innovation that will bring us in innovative ways in the next years. So it, what it means. So that's why I think that the global pact it's, uh, uh, for the environment is a new way to show not only the challenges that you have considering environmental protection, the global environmental protection, but it's a new way to show and to share the connection among different societies and different people. It's how we can share co-responsibilities with different people, okay, without going against old concepts like national sovereignty. National sovereignty was solved in declaration, the Stockholm Declaration in 1972. Okay, so when we have some players that try to go back to the past, except to highlight things that were solved around 50 years ago, come on, we are not discussing this. Okay, what we are discussing, indeed, how we can bring global society. We are a global society. Okay, and uh, we have different societies that are coming together with different challenges, with different perspectives. But what I'm saying is that we can the diversity of societies, of diverse of economic realities, diversity of uh, environmental reality, but we have one planet. Okay, and we need to understand how things connect, what are what, how we can share responsibilities, what will be the new expression of global citizenship, and that's why global pact for me to debate a global pact for the environment. Uh, make sense. We need to debate. We need to understand what are the new challenges. We need to understand uh, what are the new responsibilities. Not to go against one country or another one. But you cannot forget that sustainability brings us together. That is so important to revigorate the multilateral system, to understand better how international cooperation will move forward considering the next years. It's not a moving on one. It's how we can move forward, what is new, and then how we can have private sector as a co-responsible actor, player, not to a sector that will wait for the government decision. The society is not managed anymore. So the, the role of media, the role of communication, and also our individual responsibility to make sense at the global level. So we are connected. Uh, not only consider the, the nature. Nature is absolutely key for this connection because we, uh, the planet is connected, because the environmental service, everything. But we need to understand in our new challenges, the global challenge that we have today is the new world that's coming, uh, the role of technology, the role of scientific knowledge, the role of uh, individual partnership, the role of the new generation. Indeed, how it can make sense to go into new challenges or to go a new way to have nature and environment preserved and use this better for our quality of life and our lifestyles and also well-being. You make some really great points, Isabella. There really is no planet B, and we're definitely not going to Mars anytime soon. So it really is imperative that we take better care of our planet. There is a lot of concern about the destruction of the Amazon, yet there are no incentives in place to conserve or restore this vital resource, or others. You were one of the first ambassadors of the common home of humanity. How would legal recognition and protection of the Earth system, as proposed, help preserve this and other critical aspects of our climate? Okay, uh, I think that uh, two or three recommendations. The first one, when you go into the global pact and you go into the these environmental ecosystems that are so important for the planet, we need to understand the national realities. So it's very important, first of all, that uh, if you go to conservation or to restoration agenda, okay, if, uh, we need to understand what are the challenges and do what's happening. Unfortunately, we have this war of narratives. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, you, even you don't know about the 25 million people that live there. And uh, uh, this is the Brazilian reality. We need to understand the Amazon reality. This means that we need to understand the Amazon challenge, consider the Amazon basin, and uh, and indeed how we can bring people together. This is the first recommendation. My second recommendation is that, okay, if you have this Earth system that you know, and indeed how we can use better the scientific knowledge, in such a way that you can have a robust input to combine this knowledge with the legal requirements or the legal uh, understanding about the global warden and how we, can, we need to move on preserving 
the earth systems. So what I'm saying is that when you bring legal uh, framework or legal uh, acknowledgement, we need to understand what science is saying and also what are the gaps of knowledge and also what are the trade-offs that we have today. We need to understand the diversity of political situation and how we did we can arrange people together and how we can bring uh, this common understanding and, and build common interests based on common interests and build, be able to build convergence. So you need to understand how you can bring international cooperation, international knowledge, knowledge, and also international solidarity to support solutions and also to understand how we preserve Amazonia, how we did Amazonia preservation, what it did, it means, consider the diversity of situation that you have there. This is really illustrative uh, because uh, Amazonia is part of the Earth systems and you need to, to maintain the Earth system. So when you go into this reality and you go and you try to understand the, as I mentioned before, the war of narratives and, and try to move beyond this, okay, and don't go into the local politics and understand how we can bring or discuss internationally what is the new international cooperation agenda that we must be developed to support uh, situations like Amazon in Brazil, this will indeed make a good and a strategic contribution to change the picture that we have today. So legal recognition and protection must indeed be used to address the solutions that we need and also to support this to make the solution permanent, okay, to make the solution resilient and not only to go into the fight or to go uh, to bring uh, the guilt into international uh, trials. I agree with this, but uh, when we manage justice, or environmental justice, social justice, my feeling is that we need to use these tracks in an innovative way, in such a way that we can indeed solve the problems in a permanent way. We need to go against poverty. We need to go against social inequality. But we need to recognize the indigenous people's rights. We need to understand that they live they like to live in an innovative way. They like, if you want to have business in Amazonia, we need to develop new business models because this is not based on the traditional ways. And also the international market must host this and pay for this. So what I'm saying is that we need to use this proposed uh, to have uh, legal uh, uh, protection for earth systems at the common home of humanity is highlighting this important uh, voice at the international level, but also to recognize the challenge that we have, for example, in Congo Basin, also Indonesia and in, in Mekong forest basins like Indonesia. And also we need to understand how restoration, farm restoration can play an important role also to add value for environmental preservation and forest preservation. It's not only one side of the coin. You have all the two sides of the coin. And we need to understand how indeed this initiative, a common home of humanity, will help us uh, not only to preserve the critical aspect of our climate, etc., etc., but also will help us to understand how we can act in a new direction, in a better way, in an inclusive way, bring people together and understand the national reality. They are not necessarily the same around the world. Even if you go in developing countries, when you discuss, for example, in Global South, if you want to discuss global south, the reality in India is full different whether we have in China than we have in Brazil or we have in South Africa. Okay, but we are together in basic group tackling climate change. So this is fascinating. Also have a BRICS club and have a G20 club. You have different realities and did what how you can bring people together if you're able to understand common interests, if you're able to find a way to bring people together based on common interests and how we can have the new tracks for convergence issues and indeed how we can this based on solution. So if you understand the challenge that we have in Amazonia, this is the challenge that, that that's what I mentioned here, Kim, is there are the issues for Amazonia. And if you understand the environmental crime you need to fight against, to tackle and you need to go there. This is enforcement, environmental enforcement. This is law and enforcement. This is different what I'm talking here. What I'm discussing here, how we can use law indeed to promote a new way to bring people together and to share responsibility and to protect the earth system. This is the debate. 
Okay, so we have no issues one side, you have the new issues on other sides, and in my feeling, common home of humanity is trying, consider the umbrella of a new global pact for the environment, is trying to bring these issues in an innovative way, or these agendas, different ones, innovative way, in such a way that it can, if you have a common understanding about this, probably you have a new way to bring people together, and it makes sense in the future that uh, you can have the protection of the systems with shared responsibility, but with a newer political understanding of the global society. It's not only the government or public sector understanding. It's about global society understanding, considering our challenges, and indeed how we can bring different nations together. And this for me is fascinating because probably this is a new way to promote politics around the world. Indeed, and how we can uh, also understand that the solution will the solution will not come from one institution. The solution will come from the effort of different people, of different societies, or different uh, institutions that uh, have a common understanding about our future. The challenge to preserve the Earth, their system, but the challenge to be together, considering uh, sustainable development for humankind. Thanks again for joining us, Isabella. Do you have any final thoughts for our audience? Thank you very much for this opportunity to dialogue and for this interview. And I think that this is important comment concerning the last question. Be an ambassador is a provocative task, okay? Not only for myself, but for people around the world. We need to provoke people to go out of the comfort zone, okay? And based on fear and, and our assets and our uh, abilities as species and not based on fear and risks and uh, to manage any comfort zone. Come on, we need to be out of the box, and I hope that the new box can be a green one. All right, and there you have it. Not only are we connected through nature, but also through the challenges that we face as a global society. Using sustainability as the issue that brings us together, we can create a new way forward, an inclusive way forward, built on a common understanding of the shared connection between humankind, nature, and the Earth system. The proposal from the Common Home of Humanity provides a new way to bring society together to share responsibility, protecting the Earth system. That is all for today, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Common Home Conversations Beyond UN75. Please subscribe, share, and be sure to tune in next Wednesday to continue the conversation with our special guest, Paolo Megalej, founder and president of the Common Home of Humanity. And visit us at www.theplanetarypress.com for more episodes and the latest news in sustainability, climate change, and the environment.